after we went through all of those concepts about circuits, we are finally back to the R or LC circuit. So, in order to get to the differential equation in question, first of all, let's use Kirchhoff's rule to figure out what all of this is. So, we have V, which is a positive change in potential, and here we have a new equation, V equals epsilon. Epsilon is just EMF, so if you saw my, my video on Faraday's law, epsilon is just basically the electromotive force, which is basically just the voltage that the battery supplies. So epsilon is the positive change in potential, minus IR, from Ohm's law we have we have here minus L di dt we're just going to ignore the negative sign then we have minus q over c equals 0 so this is what we have to work with so far Next, we can make it so this is epsilon equals to IR minus L, or sorry, plus L di dt plus Q over C. Then, Then, since I is equal to dq dt, we can express this in terms of q and t. So we have epsilon equal to dq dt times r plus l. Well, we already have i to its first derivative. So the derivative of a first derivative is a second derivative. So that's d second derivative of q with respect to t plus q over c. And then we always want to make sure that the highest order term has no coefficients, so we divide everything by l. So we end up with epsilon over l equals to l v squared, sorry, no l, e squared q over dt squared plus 1 r over l dq dt plus q over cl. And that is the equation that this entire video has built up to. And, you know, I guess I wouldn't be doing it justice if we don't do any practice problems for it. So we're doing some practice problems. So let's do a practice problem for the very last time for this video. So let's say R is equal to 10 ohms. Our inductance L is equal to 2.5 tenries. And our capacitance C is equal to 0.1 farads. Oh, and then our epsilon, uh, I don't know. I guess it'll just be 10 volts. Well, then let's solve for a function that satisfies these conditions. So we want to find q of t equals question mark. And you know what, for the sake of space, I'm just going to delete this very awesome drawing. So let's start by plugging everything in. So 10 over 2.5 is 4 for the left hand side, or g of t, we'll call it, because that's what you call it in this differential equation solving method called variation of parameters. We have second derivative of q with respect to t plus r over l, that's also 4, then dq dt plus, well, let's see, q over 2.5 times 0 0.1, that is also 4. So 4 equals whatever I'm about to write. Uh, 
And this seems like a really wonky differential equation to solve, considering that the left-hand side is not zero like a homogeneous function that we can easily solve for. So we'll use this technique called the variation of parameters to solve. It involves this thing called the superposition principle, where there are two different solutions to the equation, and we'll just use both of them. So let's start off with this first term. So the u1 that we want to solve for is equal to the integral of Ronskian 1 of t times g of t over the total Rons the Ronskian of everything. Then u of t is equal to integral of Ronskian number 2 of t g of t over Ronskian of overall dt. And in case you guys don't know what a Ronskian is, because I don't think I ever explain what a Ronskian is, is a Ronskian is a square matrix, or the determinant of a square matrix, where we have solution 1, which we will call Q1, then we have Q2, then on the second entry row, we have DQ1 for dt and DQ2 for dt. And what exactly is Q1 and Q2? Well, we have this equation here to, to guide us. So d squared q dt squared plus 4 dq dt plus 4 q equals g of t. So what q1 and q2 will be is we can just use the characteristic equation here, or r is 4 equals 0, r is negative 2 and negative 2. So our q's will be the solution to this differential equation if g of t is 0. So we could say that q1 is equal to e to the negative 2t, and then Q2 will be t e to the negative 2t, if you remember my lesson on repeated roots. So we now know Q1 is equal to e to the negative 2t, and Q2 is equal to t e to the negative 2t. So now we can just take the Ronskian, find the determinant, <coughs> so w of t equals e to the negative 2t times negative 2 e to the negative 2t. And then we have t equal t e to the negative 2t times e to the negative 2t <coughs> minus 2 t e to the negative 2t. The Ronskian is just the determinant, so ad minus bc. So we will get e negative 2t times fourth entry That's equal to e to the negative 4t. Then we have 1 minus 2t. Then minus b times c. So that's b to the negative 2t t times t times negative 2 e to the negative 2t. That's equal to positive 2t e to the negative 2t, or sorry, 4t so we can add these two up and our overall round skin will end up just being e to the negative 4t because these two terms cancel out <coughs> so we now know that, but what the hell is the first Ronskian and the second Ronskian? Well, that's actually quite simple. So Ronskian number one is equal to just is equal to the determinant, but then the first column will just be replaced with zero one qt dqt dt. And then 
Likewise, for the second Ronskian, you get the determinant, but then the second column will be x'd out and replaced with 0, 1. So you just get 0, 1 here. So then pretty easy, negative qt, positive q1, because these two multiply, these two multiply into 0. So after all is said and done, we'll find that u1, we can just plug everything back into our original equation. So u1 is equal to first Ronskian times g of t, which is here, over overall Ronskian dt. Then we just get w1 of t, so that's negative q2. We already know what q2 is here negative t e to negative 2t times gt, which is just 4. w of t is e to the negative 4t dt. So we just get the integral of negative 4t e to the 2t dt, which we'll be able to get with integration of parts, integration by parts. So I'll just quickly solve with the integration of parts right now. So this is our u, but then remember, in the solution, you also need to multiply by q1. So let's multiply this by q1. So u1, q1 is just equal to u1, which is negative 2t, e to the 2t power plus e to the 2t power times e to the negative 2t. So all the ETs cancel out, and you're just left with negative 2t plus 1. So that is our first solution. Now, we have to go on to our second solution. So now we can solve for u2. So that's just the integral of second Brodskyian q1, which is e to negative 2t times g of t, which is 4 over overall Brodskyian e to the negative 4t dt equals integral of 4 e to the 2t dt. So that's just 2 e to the 2t power. So u2, q2 is equal to 2 e 2t times t e to the negative 2t. So that's just 2t. So we already know u1, q1 is equal to negative 2t plus 1. So if you add these two together, you just get 1. And if you plug that into the equation, well, the second derivative of 1 is obviously 0. The second derivative of, sorry, the first derivative of 1 is obviously 0. You can plug in 1 into q, and you get 4. So did I really have to do that entire variation of parameters thingy to find that 4 equals 4 and that the solution was 1? Well, not really. I could have just like used my eyeballs and kind of just think, well, q can just equal 1. But I kind of wanted to mess with you guys and practice my differential equations. So that was kind of fun, I guess. Anyways, thank you for watching this entire video.